America, it's time for some straight talk. You love your phone. Look at you. You hardly put it down. But you don't love that expensive wireless plan, do you? So what if I told you you can keep that phone, network, and number two for a lot less? Well, this is me telling you, it's time to switch to straight talk, guys. Bring your own phone and get unlimited plans starting at just 45 bucks a month on America's largest, most dependable 4G LTE networks. Straight talk wireless. Only at Walmart. Savings may vary. Please refer always to the latest terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. Here we are. We're Mike and Mike. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. Our guests appear on the Shell Pinzo performance line, and they will include our legal analyst, Ryan Smith, who does a terrific job. You're seeing him increasingly on Outside the Lines and other places. And we have him on because we want to ask a few questions about the NCAA right, and the right. FBI. But there are actually some interesting questions being raised now um, over this matter with the NFL. So, Mike, let me read you. I'm reading this from Pro Football Talk, but this is from an interview that President Trump did with Fox News. Uh, it says here it was taped yesterday and broadcast this morning. So this aired at some point this morning. Right. Um, and here are some quotes directly from the president. Quote, I have so many friends that are owners, and they're in a box. I've spoken to a couple of them. They say we are in a situation where we have to do something. I think they're afraid of their players, and I think it's disgraceful, and they've got to be tough, and they've got to be smart. End quote. In the interview, he also asked why the league is not, quote, enforcing a rule that has been in existence for a long time, end quote, that forces players to stand for the anthem. And as it's pointed out here, there is no rule. No rule. But there is a suggestion. Right. And it's in the operations manual, not in the rule book. Correct. The NFL's game operations manual says both teams must be on the field for the playing of the anthem. And that the players, quote, should stand at attention, face the flag, hold helmets in their left hand, and refrain from talking. And as it's pointed out here on Pro Football Talk, should and must have obviously two very different meanings. So one of the questions that I think does come from this, and we will ask Ryan what the legal ramifications of it would be, is if this continues down the path that it appears to be heading right now, Mm -hmm. will the National Football League consider making a rule like the one the NBA has that says the players must do these things that it's suggesting they should do or face consequences. Well, I mean, it it could go a couple of ways. I I think right when you first say that, you would say there's no way they want to, even though, you know, we know there's, what, the seven owners that have given a million dollars to the Trump campaign, but those owners have come out and basically said that they – under you know don't want anything to fight divisive they want to show unity and they understand what the players are doing they may not agree but they're everybody the whole NFL from the league on down to the players was trying to show unity this past weekend in lieu of the president's uh, uh, quote about them so the first thing you won't want to do and let, let's be honest if if you make that rule you're going to feel like you're giving in to what the president said right and 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 then they seem to be like fighting everything he says all along the way wait wait a minute you can't tell us, you know, call us SOBs and tell us this and say this about us. And we're, we're, we're going to show you our unity, you know, against what you're saying. And then to all of a sudden invoke a rule that says the president said, you know, their only way out of this is to make a rule just on the surface. Players in the league won't want to do that. OK, whether it's right or wrong, whatever you think about it is you normally don't want to give in, you know, and, th- and that's what it would seem like. Now, if this goes on for a while. And you were seeing an effect of a drop in viewership, which people say, is it, is it the, the hurricanes, the, the horrible things that have gone on? Is it just the natural loss of some viewership? Though, as Hembo points out, baseball has been up. College football has been Sunday up. Sunday night baseball's ratings were up 10%. College football ratings, we know, are up. So if you want to sit there all say all sports are down, they're not. So is this having an effect on, on the NFL? It, it clearly seems that it is. Now... There's a tipping point. The, the, the league is making $14 billion. What's the tipping point? What, what's, you know, one is advertisers. And we saw a slew yesterday, if you were reading articles, a slew of big-time advertisers basically are behind the NFL, right? They, yeah. they, they basically are saying, we understand, players, you know, a right to First Amendment. and every, all very carefully worded yes. uh, statements. Every, but, but all backing the NFL, right? Nobody said we're done with the NFL. It wasn't all of their sponsors, and that's a major thing because that's where the big money is coming from. 
So those would be the NFL's national sponsors. National sponsors. What we don't know is in each individual market where each of these teams make a tremendous exactly amount right. of money from what, local sponsorship, what, right. what they're hearing. What they're doing. That. That, yeah, it's exactly right. So where's that tipping point? Because now if you start losing a bunch of money, now the NFL could actually this could actually be a place where they want to sit down with the players and say, listen, gang, we're splitting a pie right now. Okay, I know you may not like how it's split, but right now we're splitting a pie. And if that pie gets smaller, everything gets smaller, including what you guys get. So, you know, that salary cap that's been going up, you know, may not anymore. All of a sudden, if we're making billions less. And I don't know what that number is, and I don't think we're there yet. But that's, we always say, what's next? There's the what's next as far as what the players are doing and what's being done about what they're protesting. Again, I say on CNN, they had the round table last night, Anderson Cooper and a group of guys, and they brought on Michael Bennett and Doug Baldwin. I thought Doug Baldwin was fantastic from the, from the Seahawks about that part of it, which, oh, by the way, is what started this all, what they're protesting about. But now, again, we start rolling to an area that kind of – isn't about that anymore, and it's like, okay, how can we stop this from happening? And and it's a shame because you lose sight of what first initially started this whole thing, but that's where we are because the NFL is going to ask viewership's down. Huh, okay, is money down? Money's down. How much is it down? Where are we losing that money? You know, the local locally, are they losing it? Are we losing it nationally? Where is it going down, and how much is it going down to a point where you finally have to say, okay, got to do something now. Losing too much money. I don't know what that point is, and I don't know if we're going to get there, but there's no doubt it's dipping down. And here's why when the president says they're in a box, I agree, because you've got really angry people on either side of this. Right. So if they were – there are people who are boycotting the National Football League right now. I don't have any idea what the numbers are, but there are people who are boycotting the National Football League right now because Colin Kaepernick is not in it. Right. If you were to now, with everything that has happened, institute a rule that makes the players stand for the national anthem based upon, obviously, the circumstances that have taken place, you're going to anger a lot of people. Yeah. So I think that though you may lose a lot of people on that side. So that that's that's the proverbial rock in the hard place. I, I don't know what to do. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't, I'm with you. Very, most of the time, I think I have some idea about what you should do. In this case, I really don't know what you do. If you're if you're Roger Goodell, you've got owners. I believe most of the owners ideologically are closer aligned with the president than they are. We'll just use Kaepernick as as the example of of the opposite side of that um, debate. I believe most of the owners are ideologically on the president's side in this, but I I don't think that they want to be perceived as limiting the individual rights and freedoms of their players, which clearly they would be doing now. Now, no one, I haven't heard a single person say, well, the NBA makes their players stand for the anthem. They don't believe in the First Amendment, which no one says that because no one thinks that in the first place about Mm -hmm. the NBA. But here you would have that. So I don't think the owners want to do that, and I don't think they want to be on the side that they're currently on for the most part. So I I don't know what they're going to do. And and the amazing thing to me is that this is where we are now when – and we're talking about this instead of the initial reason that Colin Kaepernick sat first. And then remember, it was Nate Boyer who was on this roundtable last night, who's the Ranger who was trying to be, go in the NFL as a long snapper, who was a, you know, a military vet, who actually told, uh, told Colin Kaepernick, listen, can you kneel? You know, sitting, is, is, they felt showed a lot of disrespect. Now, Nate Boyer doesn't, think, doesn't like the kneeling either. But he talked to Kaepernick about kneeling instead of sitting, and Kaepernick obliged that and said, okay, I will kneel for whatever you want to think about that. But, again, are we losing sight of what went on? And that's why I I loved Doug Baldwin last night because the question going around that roundtable was, well, what are we looking at concrete? What's going on? Is anybody doing anything concrete? Doug Baldwin came on in the last five minutes and said, and, and even reference that said, everybody's asking that question. He said, it, it, you're not going to maybe see it nationally. He said, come to Seattle. He goes, I invite Heinz Ward, Spike Lee, come to Seattle. Come see what all of us are doing every single Tuesday. Come see the conversations we've had with the local police. Come see or, or get, well, how about maybe getting DARE programs back in our schools, try and, and, and increase and, and better a relationship between the police and, little, and, and middle school. Before 
you know, as the kids are growing up to get that, how we had with the D.A.R.E. programs. He was giving you concrete things that they're doing and that things that could be done, which, which all of a sudden I was sitting there going, oh, yeah. This is what this was all about in the first place. And here's a guy being with his teammates being proactive in it for what the actual situation at the first kneeling down was about, to which we seem to have moved way past that now. All right, so there are a lot of questions here, and let's try and get some of the answers. Mike and Mike were presented by Progressive Insurance, and our legal analyst, Ryan Smith, joins us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Ryan, we're going to throw you a little bit of a curveball here because I, I, the original plan uh, was to have you on to ask you some of the questions about the FBI investigation into NCAA basketball coaches, and we will get to that. But with this uh, coming up here this morning and some of the president's most recent comments on Fox News, I would ask you this. If the National Football League office slash the owners decide they want to implement a rule that states that players must stand for the national anthem rather than it being suggested in the game operations manual, but it, they want to just uni- unilaterally make this a rule. Can they, and what legal recourse would the union or the players have if they strongly opposed it? Okay, so the first thing is, uh, earlier in the week I asked the NFL, hey, would you ever impose penalties if, for example, uh, the, the protest went on for too long or somebody did something out of the realm of what we're seeing right now? They didn't want to go there. They didn't want to deal with that kind of hypothetical, and it makes sense because you don't know where that's going to go. What they could do is under the collective bargaining agreement, you would argue that they could do that, that they could make a rule. This is, again, a contract between two parties. They could make a rule saying, hey, you have to stand or you get fined. What could the players do? They could try to drag this kind of thing into federal court as a constitutional argument. I don't know how successful they would be, because think about all the different things you can find players over right now, Um, different things from different gestures, things that in society we could do But in the NFL, you cannot do. So I think as you look at it in the near term, the NFL could make a kind of rule like that and be protected by the CBA so long as they have that kind of power, so long as if they don't, it's negotiated between the two sides. But outside of that, could a player make a stink about it and try to bring it to federal court? There's always a chance. Yeah, I I personally don't see that happening. And if it is tried, I think it's going to be down the road a little bit. We'll see because we're we're all kind of scratching our head on where this thing is going to go. And now... All right, Ryan, we're scratching our head on this whole thing going on in college basketball with the, the FBI getting involved. Certainly when the NCAA knocks on your door, you're a little nervous. When the FBI knocks on your door, it's a little, little more than nervous at that point. So first explain to us, Rick Pitino is on unpaid administrative leave. So, again, in the way you do it so well, in ways yeah. we can understand it, what does that mean and where – what is the setting up between him and Louisville and the, the battle for when I would imagine he eventually gets fired? It depends on, Mike, what you think is happening in the background. So to the outside, look at, from the outside looking in, it appears to be, hey, let's put him on leave, no money, and then we intend to let him go. Now, some people say, okay, this is the school's way of giving him notice. In his contract, he has a clause that says he can be fired for just cause. means a lot of things. NCAA violations, criminal convictions, things like that. If they do that, they have to give him 10 days notice. He has to be able to present evidence to the contrary, and then maybe they can let him go. There is no buyout in his contract, shocking as that is. So at this point, it could be the school saying, let's put him on the sidelines. This is kind of his notice, and then in a couple days, we're going to let him go. But what this really, I, I think that gives him a leg up, because right now, If you look at it from his camp's perspective, what has he done wrong? Forget about the court of public opinion and what you think he's done. He's not named in this suit. He's not being penalized for anything. He's not under NCAA investigation because there hasn't been an investigation yet because the NCAA just found out about it on Tuesday. So at this point, what he's doing is they're sitting him on the sidelines and basically trying to figure this whole thing out and find a way, it sounds like, from the school's perspective to fire him without having to pay him a lot of money. One of the things that that when this first uh, broke the other day, and I was reading as much of it as I could find, I was confused by one piece of it, and I called Jay Billis, and he and I have been talking about this a lot in in the days since then, and that is, in the case of a shoe company, in this case Adidas, being directed by a school, in this case Louisville, to give a highly tatted recruit $100,000 surreptitiously, or his family, I understand that that is against NCAA rules. What I'm struggling to understand is why that's a federal crime. 
And he explained to me that the aggrieved party in this is the school because, in theory, that this is that it could put them at jeopardy and they can get into all kinds of trouble. But if that's the case, then should the federal government be going after the player and the family because they're the ones who are knowingly taking the money and thus knowingly putting the school in that jeopardy? That is a great question, Mike. So here's the deal. I would say there's essentially two aggrieved parties here, at least according to the feds. There's the school, and I'll explain that in a second, and then there are the kids and the families. So let's start with the school. From the school perspective, what they're alleging in these complaints is that coaches, shoe companies, they did all this stuff. The goal was to get the money from point A to point B. Shoe companies, we have the money. Families, we want the money, or others, maybe coaches in certain instances. So how do we do that? It was all about passing the money through different avenues, in some cases trying to file, at least they claim, filing false paperwork to get kids scholarships. That's against the school, and they can make a connection to that and conspiracy, money laundering, at least according to their allegations based on how it's being done, and fraud. There's something else in this that doesn't get talked a lot about, and it's called the honest services contract. And what that basically means, and this relates to the families and the kids, it basically means that when a kid's going to a school and when a kid is uh, in sort of the, the, the realm of somebody who's working for a public institution or a private institution, they depend on them for certain things. They're trusting them to work as if they are a part of the school. So what the government tried to do here is they said these kids relied on coaches like the, the accused Chuck Person and others to give them the right kind of advice. And what these guys were really doing was taking money and taking advantage of these kids and trying to make money off their backs, and so were the shoe companies. So I think what's not often talked about here when people say, well, why not go after the families? The government is trying to protect the families. They're trying to set up, they look at this as corruption, and they say, hey, we could have situations where kids, at least in theory, 8, 9, 10, are being brought in by these coaches and told, hey, I can help you with this, I can help you with that. Just sign with these guys. Just sign this document or that document or with this shoe company and being taken advantage of all the way along the line. And that's what they're trying to avoid. So it's really about the school and the families that they're trying to protect against what they see, the managers, the shoe companies and others trying to take advantage of. Our legal analyst, uh, Ryan Smith, joining us. Okay, so in watching my movies where somebody gets arrested, but they don't really yeah. care about that person, they want the bigger fish, so yeah. they dangle something there to try and get the bigger fish. Is there any of that here? We hear everybody's quaking in their boots. We hear the FBI saying, call us, don't make us call you. The people yep. that they have, have charged, can, outside of hanging you know, less jail time over their head for something, are they looking for those people to give them more information? Are they looking for a bigger fish here? Is that something that's, that's credible here? I would have to believe they are. They said two really big things in that press conference that showed me that they are meaning that they mean serious business. The first is this is an ongoing investigation. The second is if you know about something wrong or you've done something wrong, don't wait. Like you said, don't wait for us to come to you. Come to us. What they are trying to do is say to everyone out there, I don't care if you're a runner, a shoe company, an assistant coach, somebody who's a friend of the program, whatever it is. If you've done anything wrong, here's the seed they're trying to plant in your head. Hey, I just had a conversation with a guy last week. Is that guy a cooperating witness with the government? Is this person somebody who might be an undercover officer? i got to run to the government and give them something. Because if they catch me, the penalties are going to be a lot worse. I've heard so many people talk about NCA investigation, and this is business as usual. Here's the difference with this circumstance. In the NCA, you get fined, you get fired from your job, whatever. Here, prison time. Chuck Person Decades in prison is what he's facing. So when you look at that kind of situation, this is the government coming at coaches and everybody involved in college basketball as hard as possible and trying to say, we will find you. So if you've got information or if you're doing something, come here. And I think even these 10 people who have been arrested, the idea is get them to flip and give over bigger fish because we want to see how far this goes. And they also, of course, unlike the NCAA, have subpoena power and wiretaps oh, and all these right. other things right. that the NCAA doesn't have. F final thought for me. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm asking you to guess on something here, Ryan. I don't mean to put you in that position. but No, please. Do you think that the feds are going, first and foremost, going after the universities, the coaches, or are they going after the shoe companies? I think, number one, they want to see, I think both. I think they want to see what's happening at the shoe companies. I, Mike, I think they're going after the system. 
This is a chance. This all started from a guy who was arrested, or excuse me, charged with a crime by the SEC and said, hey, I know about this whole business of corruption going, in, going on in college basketball. You should take a look. I think they are trying to peel back every single layer of the onion and see how far this goes, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's a shoe company, whether it's runners, whatever it is. Anything in their mind that shows that they are taking advantage of someone else, whether it's the school or whether it's the kids, they want to see what they can get. And for them, and this is what I think people don't always realize about the federal government. This isn't about, like, in the NCA, investigation finished, great, let's move on to the next thing. Federal government, we can take this years. We can take this as long as we want to, to find whatever we want to. So I think it's everybody, really, Mike. It's everybody who is involved, anybody who's doing wrongdoing, anybody in their mind who's taking advantage of kids or schools, they want to find them. And that can be assistant coaches, head coaches, or as far up the line as it goes. That's really well done. Ryan, thank you so Thanks, much, Ryan. as always, for your insight. Sure, guys. We'll talk take to care. You soon. All right, that's Ryan Smith with us there. That's, oh. uh, he's, he's very good. I understand things so much better after I Mike, me to too. Uh, 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 yes, that, that's not debatable. He's phenomenal. What, what is interesting to me is I don't know what the resources are that they're putting into this. So this is just something to ask yourself. You know, like this is high profile. I get it. And, and I get that those of us who live in this little sports cocoon in which we exist think this is a very big deal. But if they are indeed spending tons, I mean, hours, and whatever it is, hundreds and thousands of hours of man time and human resources, and uh, hours is the word I was looking for, man hours or whatever the term is for it, and, and resources and money and everything else, to go after what? You know, like, like that, that, that shoe companies, shoe companies, the schools are being defrauded out of, I, I mean, thought that as well, that, that it feels like a lot to go after something that that's why I was asking the question, like, what are they trying to get at? Well, this? well, who, who was on? We've had people on talking about this saying, you know, some of these electable positions. Yeah, it's Will Kane. It was well, Will, Will Kane when you're up. getting high profile, you know, you're going after the NCAA, you know, and is that what's going on? I, I don't, I don't know because I thought the exact same question when, when you saw this story, the, the four letters I would have seen associated would be NCAA has all this info, not the three letters FBI. Because I thought, well, wait a minute, why why are they getting involved in this one? I, I didn't understand it as well, and I don't know if that's the main reason the electable officials, as Will Kane said. So, quite honestly, I'm not sure. But now we are where we are, and it's going to get bigger, and then the question becomes, what happens next? And I certainly have some questions about that. Home isn't just a place. It's a feeling that you're safe to enjoy the things that matter most. ADT lets you take that feeling with you, whether you're at home, your business, or online. We help keep you safe with security systems, home automation, alarms, and surveillance, so you can feel at home wherever you are. Go to ADT.com to get that feeling for less than a dollar a day. ADT. Home. Safe home. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. All right, you have any wrap-up thoughts on this sort of thing before my, we roll my, on? My wrap-up thought is going – and it's not a wrap-up. There's nothing being solved by no, this. No, no, I, I just but, meant for the moment. Yeah. Going forward with the NCAA, see, here's my thought, and I, and I wonder what you would say are – for those that, that are saying it, this thing needs to be revamped, changed yeah. somehow, which I think to a point a lot of people agree. Now, just how far you go, I don't, I don't know. Who does it? Who, who, who does it? I mean, are we relying on university presidents? Are we relying on the people in the NCA building who are running it? Do you take a group that they always, you hire these outside groups to do these investigations? Do you hire an outside group to say, listen, this is what we got. It ain't working too well. Here's the old book. Give us a new book. You know, and see what they come up with. Who does it? it it's a fine question. I don't know the answer. There's the, the, the NCAA is, in its at, its at its most basic, it is the uh, collaboration, the conglomeration, whatever the word is, of all these schools. Right. So 
In theory, yes. The answer would be the schools, the university presidents. Now, there's so many of them. So where they put together committees and all that kind of stuff. Or is the answer, which I have been telling you for a while and you've been yelling at me that I'm wrong, is that the big conferences, the bigs are going to break away from everybody else and just do their own thing because they don't need everybody else. They don't need. I mean, one of the beauties of the NCAA tournament, basketball Mm -hmm. tournament, yes, is all the little bids that or the bids that go to the smaller conferences and the smaller schools. And you get to see the Cinderella's and all that. But they can live without that. And I believe that ultimately they may just break away from everybody else. Aren't they? Making money hand over fist. Yeah, but now Why? a whole bunch of them might go okay. to jail. So this this just happened for a few teams. So so they're going to break apart so they can do all these things no, no, no. for the few people no, that are involved. If if who was it that said this morning that they heard that up to uh, Pat Forty <laughs> said this eventually is going to ensnare up to a hundred schools. Okay, so you'll see that happen, and you say let's break away so we can pay our players to come to our well, school. So we, we can, can do whatever we want. Rules. Yeah. So if you're if these things were not see what what should be remembered is that if these things were not a violation of the rules they would right. not be against the law. Right. No crime was committed mm-hmm. except that it was defrauding. Now let me separate again. The thing that the four assistant coaches were are accused of doing which I think is a 10 out of 10 on the despicable meter which is convince these you know sort of steer the players steer their players towards financial advisors and others um, without knowing that they're getting money for leading them in these mm-hmm. directions. Th- that That's separate. That's totally different. No one should want the right to do that. But the idea of what Louisville specifically is involved in here, which is making an arrangement with your shoe company that they're going to give some money to the players to come to the school and wear the shoes, that in and of itself isn't against the law. It is just a problem because it is now defrauding the school because it's against NCAA rules. Right. So it puts the school in jeopardy of, of, of sanctions and other things. But if it wasn't – this is going to sound like a ridiculous statement, but I think you'll know what I mean. If it wasn't against the rules, it wouldn't be against the law. Mm-hmm. So if you change the rules, you don't have these problems. No, no, I, I understand that, and I disagree with you. At any time soon, we're going to have super conferences. They have it great now. They're, they're, they're not going to actively be seeking something different when they have it great now and say, why are we going to put all that effort into making these super conferences, making up a whole new rule book when things are going pretty well for us now? I'm not saying it's going to last and it won't eventually get to that, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. I That's just, just my opinion. I saw something just came across my screen, so let me read They're this They're forming super conferences? No. <laughs> I'm reading this to you directly. The federal investigation into the corrupting influence of money in college basketball has now ensnared Nike. Sources familiar with the investigation confirmed to ESPN and ABC News that Nike's grassroots basketball division, referred to as the Elite Youth Basketball League, has been served with a subpoena as federal prosecutors in New York and the FBI dig deeper into what they've called the, quote, dark underbelly of college basketball. When reached this morning, a Nike spokesman had no comment. The company previously issued a statement when news of the case broke, saying it, quote, believes in fair and ethical play both in business and sports and strongly opposes any form of manipulation, end quote. So the subpoena was first reported by Forbes contributor and attorney Darren Heitner. Hmm. So that the news that we had heard that Nike was involved right, in this yesterday, right, the yeah. subpoena, I guess, is the new part of the news this morning. So let me, let me let me tell you. What, what what fear it's got to be when it's, like I said, the three letters of FBI as opposed to the four letters of NCAA. Yeah, look, Man. I mean, you know, the, the, <laughs> short of the death penalty or, you know, the, the NCAA's version of the death penalty like SMU or something, there's really only so much the NCAA can do to you. It'll affect yes. a small handful of people. Those people will be out. Louisville basketball has been the most profitable basketball um, mm-hmm. uh, program in America every year since 2011. They'll take a hit based on this. Right. But if they make a couple of good decisions, five years from now, they could be right back basically. Agree. Maybe not right where they were with Patino, but, but close. Still doing well. Some facsimile thereof. Right. You get the FBI come in and, and start, you know, unpacking your, I, lo- I, your luggage, you got a major problem. And I guess that's why I asked Ryan Smith is, is who are the big fish? Is it, is it they're eventually, they're trying to get to Nike and Adidas? Are those the big fish? I mean, this, that's again, because I thought the same thing you did. So, you subpoena or, or, or charge these assistant coaches, so now you're going to squeeze them, obviously, right? Yeah. For info. Right. 
For what? I, what? I'm totally with you. Yeah. Well, my first question, I told you, I called Bill. What, what, what are we missing? Where's yeah. the crime in this? Well, I mean, we get that it's against the rules. Right, right, right. right but where's right. the crime? I understand uh, the NCAA having well, a problem. Well, I mean, I get it. the crime. I get now what they're I saying, do. what the crime is. I, I, but, but then my thought is, okay, I, I, just like I said, I watch these movies. You know, uh, we got the little guy. We got the corner guy, guy in the street corner. Now let's get the, you know, supplier. Right, of course. Uh, so that all it, makes is, sense. Is that it, is that what we're looking to, for? Well, so yeah. so so this was to get some assistant coaches so you can get Adidas or get Nike. Is, is, and is, why exactly do you want them? Yeah, is what you're yeah. asking. No, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally with you. Unless this actually adds up ultimately to so much money in money laundering and whatever else yeah. it is that's going on that it becomes worth as much effort as it sounds like they're putting into it. Or is it, uh, and listen, this is not me. I don't know anything about this, but Will Kane suggesting that sometimes these high profile things are done by people for in these elections. positions for the attention yeah. and all of that. Whatever it is, it certainly has gotten them a lot of attention. All right, we have over unders here. And we'll get to those right after I ask you. Uh oh. Tonight, Bears Packers, renewal of the longest standing rivalry in the history yep. of the NFL, and you couldn't be more even. They've literally each won the same number of games, and their total point differential is four. The Packers have scored four more points than the Bears in their one hundred and ninety five, I think, yeah. in his meetings. Incredible. Who wins tonight at Lambeau Field? Man. Straight out or by points? I don't even know what the points well, are in Green Bay is Seven? a fourteen. The, 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 they have a seven-point favorite in Vegas. Seven-point favorite. Okay. The FPI gives the Packers an 84% chance of Our winning. Our nerds are saying 14 points? 14 points. All right, spread. I'm way against the nerds on this one. I think seven it, points. I think it'll Packers be closer. minus seven. Here's the deal. I, I don't know yet between the two offensive tackles, Mike Daniels in the middle. They were both all limited in practice. Do you sit those guys again if they're close to coming back and because you have 10 days on the back end of this to really get them ready when you start the second quarter? Of your season, that's how the coaches like to look at it all. You know, I love what the dual-headed running backs doing for Chicago. I, I think they're better than people are giving them credit for. While they won, you know, last game, Glennon wasn't great in it by any stretch. So you're not sure what you're going to get in Lambeau and Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to lean toward them. I, I don't think. I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think, though. I'm not. I'm not even giving the seven. Not even giving the seven. So I'll, I'll take Chicago in the points, but I think Green Bay wins the game. I will give the seven. Uh, these Thursday night games are an enormous advantage for the home team. I understand the injuries on the offensive line. Um, but when the Bears have been bad, they've been very, very bad. And I think that the Packers uh, take it tonight, take care of business, and cover the number. Mike and Mike, let's do over-unders. They're brought to you by Cabbage, who created a simple way for businesses to get flexible access to up to $100,000. That's Cabbage with a K. Here we go. Our first over-under is one and a half. At the number of undefeated teams that will remain after this week. There are currently two. Atlanta hosts Buffalo. Kansas City hosts Washington on Monday night. I think both being at home definitely gives them an advantage, especially Atlanta and the Dome. So I'm going to say both. So I'm going to say over. I think they'll both stay undefeated. I'm really, really looking forward to that Monday nighter. I agree. All the way around. The ding doesn't mean that. that Yes, it does. You are correct. <sighs> It is going to go over the one and a half. Next, over under at also is at one and a half of the number of Thunder Big Three that will be on the roster a year from now. So Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, one and a half on how many of them will still be in OKC at this time next year. I think George will be gone. Carmelo's a different story, right? You have to give up some money. Car- how much would he have to give up? To, to, he would have to opt out opt of out to his give $28, up $28 million dollars for next year. Right. So. Or be traded. I mean, he has right, a he no could trade be traded. clause. He could be traded. He does it. The no trade clause did come with him, so he'd have to open He's very up. unlikely, I think, to opt out. I'm going to say, I'm going to say only one. I'm going to say Westbrook stays. And the other two be- I think that's correct. I, I, I don't care if you think it's correct. This is an opinion thing. There's no dinging involved. Yes, there's dinging. There's no dinging. Next, over under at 16. Points per game, Dwayne Wade will score with the Cavaliers this season. He averaged 18-3 last season in Chicago. Career low of 16 came during his rookie year. I'm going under on this. He may see more time. Er- he may see more time early on with Isaiah, depending on the time Isaiah Thomas misses, uh, how they're going to do that. But overall, I think he's going to be that that a good, great guy coming off the bench for them. So I think it's under. 16 Boy, points. Boy, you're red my, hot. You are red hot. It's you're not right a right-wrong thing. It's an opinion thing. Over Let me tell under. you what. You buzz me. 
You're not going to have that finger anymore. Over or under the World Series as the farthest the Cubs or Indians will reach this season. The Cubs are the first reigning World Series champ to make the playoffs in five years. So over under the World Series. Cubs, Indians, either, neither, both. Oh, I'm going over on the Indians. Does so it? you will go over. Yes. I didn't touch a thing. No, you didn't. Let I, the listen, record show. Those guys think they're cute. I don't follow. By, by I, don't, doing I, that. I don't understand the question. What is over, I don't either. Under over, under. Under. How do you go over the over World the World Series? Out. You win. So re- so reaching so, the world. It doesn't say. So, it just says the World Series. It doesn't say. It says how far they will reach let's this, this postseason. Let's just both you and I agree. Hit the ding on this. Yeah, yeah. It was a ridiculously stupidly <laughs> written Correct. question. I agree. So let's move on to the next All one. All right. Two more. Okay. Over under 200 all-purpose yards for Saquon Barkley this week against Indiana. Last season, Indiana helped him to 58 yards, rushing 33 carries, two catches. He's only had back-to-back 200-yard all-purpose yards once in his career. This is all-purpose yards, not rushing. I'm telling you, Indiana is tough. They are way tougher than you think. I actually think it is going to be under. I agree. Really? That's just my way of telling you that I agree with you. Yeah. Finally, You're over just under. You're to press the other one, aren't oh, you? Yes, I am. <laughs> one and a half, the number of undefeated teams from the Power Five heading into the playoff this year. Undefeated. Undefeated. In each of the three years that we've had this thing, there's been one undefeated team and only one in the Final Four. So wow. will there be more Never over under two. one and a half? No, I'll, I'll, I'll say under. I'll say it'll stay at one. I want to. I really want to. You're just afraid to hit it. You no, think no, it's going to be two? You. I agree with you. I think Alabama if, is going to be unbeaten. If there's going to be another one, who is it? Uh, Al- Clemson. Clemson. How about the Big Twelve? Do you, do you think anyone will run the table? No, I don't. Because I think Oklahoma would be really Oklahoma. Or TCU. TCU is really good there. Oklahoma is really good. They'll lose a game. There's, there's a lot of opportunity to lose there. The, 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 the Clemson is starting to look pretty think. good to to uh, to make their run. Michigan, Penn State. When I mean, you're looking at the different uh, places, I, I think yeah. They're going to beat each. They're going to cannibalize each other. I think yep. Alabama will be unbe- Actually, I think Clemson has a pretty good chance now. The more you watch, I them, do as well. I was thinking it too. Let's change our mind to over. You want? You just so you want to hit the ding. Well, I don't want. I don't want to disagree with you. I'm afraid that you'll break my finger. So you and tell I will. Me. I know you will. Can we go over? Yeah, let's go. Let's change our mind. Hey, that's a win. And that's over under. There you go. With Mike and Mike, which is brought to you as always by our friends at Cabbage. Okay. Quick final note. Yep. My wife Stacy is here. Yep. She and I have uh, some stuff we're going to go do later today. And get a box. Uh, what's that? Get a box. We got to get a box. Yep. So I told you I opened the show by saying this that you got me in trouble. Yep. I didn't do anything. People were tweeting Stacy and saying, "Can you get me a bobblehead?" So she asked me, "Oh, can I give people bobbleheads?" And I said, "No." You got yourself in trouble. You told your wife no. Uh, well, I didn't think we had the uh, ability to do that. I, I mean, we're giving them away on the show. I didn't think we could just willy nilly give them away. My wife is giving them away. Did you see me impeding that at all? No. And, Did you and, see me at all stopping that? Stace, Did you see me at any point say, "Chris, you can no longer give away a bobblehead"? Correct. And Stace got wind of that, and that didn't go well for me. Oh. No. So. We are going to. Here's what we're going to do. My yeah. wife has said she's going to tweet out that she's going to give out 25 more bobbleheads. Correct. So she can stop being inundated. My kids being inundated with it. 25. I'm going to take them home. She's going to give them out. So, Stacy, if you're good with it, 25 bobbleheads you can have. You can give out any way you'd like. And then that would be that's it. That's it. Okay, and, and then the rest of them will it. just be given out on the show. That's exactly right. And 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 that way, hopefully, we'll get some peace. We could finally say to our wives, you're cut off. Well, no, maybe not. Yeah, there's really, really there's so many that. jokes I, there that I we'll regret making. Like that? I, I, I didn't Have a great day at all. See you later. Not one bit.